Welcome to Electron Line. Our next example has two posts. Between the two posts, there is a beam that's connected to a hinge on the left side and a rope or a cable on the right side. And the cable is suspended from this post. It makes an angle of 30 degrees relative to the beam or relative to the horizontal, I should say. The mass of the person standing on the beam, two meters away from this left post, is 60 kilograms. And the mass of the beam is 200 kilograms. The length of the beam is 5 meters. Supposed to find the tension in the cable and the vertical force on the hinge supporting the beam on the left side. Starting out with trying to find the tension there, what we're going to do is we're going to pick a pivot point right here at point A. And we're going to say that since everything is in equilibrium, that the sum of all the torques about point A must add up to zero. Let's find all the torques causing a torque at point A. We have the weight of the person small mg at a distance of 2 meters away from the pivot point and then if we find the center of the beam which is the halfway point 2.5 meters away from there 2.5 meters away from the right edge we have the mass of the beam big mg uh, or I should say the weight of the beam pulling down in this direction and then we have the tension on the string pulling in this direction notice that the line of action of that that force or that tension is in this direction so let's find the, all the torques acting at point A. There should be three of them. The first one is the weight of the person. And that weight will cause a clockwise motion about point A, which means that's a negative torque, minus small mg, times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point, which would be a distance of 2 meters. Minus, again, because the weight of the beam causes a clockwise motion around the pivot point, that's a negative torque, minus big mg times the distance from the pivot point to the line of action of the force which is 2.5 meters and finally the tension now the tension will cause a counterclockwise motion about pivot point a that would be a positive torque positive tension times let's call it d d is the perpendicular distance from the line of action of that force to the pivot point so let's call that d right here now all we have to do is find out what D is and solve for the tension. Now notice this is the length of the beam here, a distance of 5 meters, which is a hypotenuse. Let's look at this angle right here. Now this angle must also be a 30 degree angle because these are opposing or opposite angles. If this is 30 degrees, then this must be 30 degrees as well. That means that D is equal to the hypotenuse of 5 meters times the sine of 30 degrees because D is opposite of the angle of 30 degrees. Now we can plug in the numbers. We have 0 is equal to minus m, m would be 60, times g, which is 9.8, times 2, I leave all the units off because ultimately uh, tension will be newtons, and it's cleaner when we leave off the units. The big mass is 200 kilograms, times 9.8 meters per second squared, times 2.5, plus the tension times the distance, now the distance will be equal to 5 meters, times the sine of 30 degrees. Now the sine of 30 degrees is equal to 0.5, that means we have 0 is equal to, um, let's simplify things just a little bit, minus 120 times 9.8, minus 500 times 9.8, and plus t, and the sine of 30 is 1 half, 1 half times 5 would be times 2.5. Moving that across to the other side, we have t is equal to, because I'm going to divide both sides by 2.5, we have minus 120 times 9.8 minus 500 times 9.8. And when I move this across the other side, that becomes a minus, minus t, and then I divide everything by 2.5. So you can see that the negative size will cancel. And now we're ready to calculate what this is equal to. 120 plus 500, that would be 620 times 9.8 divided by 2.5 equals. The tension required would be 2,430 newtons. So the tension is equal to 2,430 newtons. All right, that's half the problem. Now the next thing we need to do is find the supporting force by the hinge in the vertical direction. To do that, we're going to shift our pivot point to this point right here and call that pivot point B. And again, since things are in equilibrium, all the 
all the torques acting on point B should add up to zero. We can therefore say that the sum of all the torques acting on B must equal zero. So let's find out what all the torques are. Again, there's three. We have the two weights, the weight of the person plus the weight of the beam that will give us torques that cause a counterclockwise motion, positive torques, and now we have the force of the post or the hinge pushing up on the beam that would give this a clockwise motion about point B that would be a negative torque. So let's add up all the torques. This is equal to the weight of the person, mg, that's a positive torque, times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of force to the pivot point, in that case that's 3 meters, plus the weight of the beam times the distance from the line of action of force to the pivot point, which is 2.5 meters, and minus, and I need to go down a little bit because I'm running out of room, minus the force in the y direction. And again, like I said, that would be equal to, that would give us a negative torque because it would cause a clockwise motion about point B. And we multiply times the distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point, which is 5 meters. Okay, now we can move the force in the y direction to the left side of the equation. So we have a positive F sub y times 5 meters is equal to little mg, that would be 60, times 9.8, times 3, plus 200, times 9.8, times 2.5, and then we move the minus f sub y to the left side, becomes plus f sub y times 5 meters, and eventually divide everything by 5. Of course, I shouldn't have written the 5 meters, so I'm uh, not, not putting the unit, so let me go ahead and get rid of that. There we go, that's cleaner. So we got rid of the five on the left side, divide both sides by five, and now we can find out what the force is on the hinge in the y direction. Be 180 times 9.8 plus 500 times 9.8, and divide the whole thing by five, and I get 1,333 newtons. So the force at the hinge in the y direction is equal to 1,300 n. 33 newtons indeed. And that's how we find the tension in the string and the supporting force on the left side of the beam. It's quite, a re quite an easy method. All you have to do again is pick the correct pivot point so you can find the unknown tension here. Pick the correct pivot point here to find the unknown force in the y direction over there. And that's the method we use to find the unknowns in a problem like this.